Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on graphing linear functions in standard form. Our objectives today are that we will review graphing horizontal and vertical lines, and we will graph linear functions in standard form using x and y intercepts. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about as I go through the lesson today. How can you use standard form to describe the graph of a linear function? Let's talk about understanding standard form. Standard form is a linear function or a linear equation written in this form, ax plus by equals c. This is one of the few times you're going to see an uppercase a, b, and c and it's different than lowercase a, b, or c. a, b, and c must be integers to consider this being in standard form, meaning a, b, and c cannot be fractions or decimals. They must be positive or negative integers. a and b can't both be zero. Either a could be zero or b, but not both. That brings us to horizontal lines and vertical lines. Let's start with horizontal lines. So we have y equals b. That means the a in standard form was 0 and eliminated the x term. So we know that b, when we talk about a line, is the y-intercept. So we have the ordered pair 0, b. So when we graph 0, b, it's where a point lies on the y-axis. So if an x-coordinate of an ordered pair is 0, the point will lie on the y-axis, making it the y-intercept of a line. So the line y equals b will be the y-intercept, and it's a horizontal line passing through the y-axis at that y-intercept point. A vertical line is a line in the form x equals a constant, or x equals a, a value. So it becomes the point a comma zero. Anytime you have a y coordinate of an ordered pair that is zero, your point is going to lie on the x axis. So if we have an x intercept and the line passes through that, that is going to be a vertical line. Now this is not a function, but it is a vertical line. It's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. So when we do not have a y, but we have x equals a constant or a number, we know we have a vertical line. Let's practice graphing horizontal and vertical lines. Here's how I think it's easy to remember it. y equals negative 3. We're going to pl plot a point on the y-axis at negative 3. And then we need to draw a line right through that, crossing through so this line is a horizontal line with a y-intercept of negative 3. To graph the line x equals 5, we're going to go to the x-axis and plot a point at 5. And then we're going to draw a line through it, having an x-intercept of 5. So we have a vertical line. Now it's your turn. I would like you to graph these two lines. Go ahead and pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the x-axis and graph a point at negative 4. Here's our point, x-axis at negative 4, and we're going to draw a vertical line through the point having an x-intercept of negative 4. So the equation x equals negative 4 is a vertical line. Now let's graph our second one, y equals 5. I'm going to plot a point at 5 on the y-axis. And then I'm going to put a horizontal line through that point. So this line has a y-intercept of 5. Now let's talk about using intercepts to graph linear equations. A linear equation written in standard form allows you to find the x and y intercepts easily. 
To find the x-intercept, we're going to evaluate the equation when y is equal to 0. To find the y-intercept, we're going to evaluate the equation when x equals 0. So standard form lends itself. It's set up perfectly to find the x and y intercepts, and you only need two points to graph a line. So let's first find the x-intercept. We know that the x-intercept is going to have a y-coordinate of 0, because then this point will lie on the x-axis, and it will be where the line crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to cover up this term, because if y is 0, this term is eliminated. So now I just need to solve the equation 3x equals 12 for x. Divide both sides by 3, so x is equal to 4. So we know that our x-intercept is going to pass, the line is going to pass through the x-axis at 4. So the point is 4, 0, the x-intercept is 4. Now let's find the y-intercept. We know that the y-intercept must have an x-coordinate of 0, so that it will be a point on the y-axis. So now I'm going to cover up the x term, because when that is 0, it's eliminated. So I need to solve the equation 2y equals 12. Divide both sides by 2, and we get that the y-intercept is 6. So now let's look at a graph. I'm going to graph the ordered pair 4, 0. That's my x-intercept. Now I'm going to graph the ordered pair 0, 6. That's my y-intercept. I'm going to connect those with a line, and there you have it. The line 3x plus 2y equals 12 is graphed here with an x-intercept of 4 and a y-intercept of 6. Now it's your turn. I would like you to graph this linear function using the x and y intercepts. Please pause, come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. All right, let's do this. So we're going to first identify the x-intercept. We know that when we have an x-intercept to lie on the x-axis, it must have a y-coordinate of 0. So we're going to cover up that y term because it would be 0. So I'm left with 2x equals 6. Divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to 3. So my x-intercept is 3. Now let's find the y-intercept. I know for a y-intercept, for it to lie on the y-axis, I need to have an x-coordinate of 0. So x is eliminated because it is 0, so I have negative y equals 6. Remember, there's an invisible 1 here, that's negative 1y, so I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, giving me an x-intercept of negative 6. Now let's plot our x and y-intercepts. So first the x-intercept, 3, 0 and my y-intercept, 0, negative 6, and then connect with your line. And there you have it, the graph of 2x minus y equals 6. Let's talk about a real-world problem with a standard form equation. You are at an amusement park with your friends. Tickets for rides are $5 each, and ice creams cost $3 each. Together, you all have $120 to spend during the day. The equation below represents the situation. Now let's graph the equation and interpret the x and y intercepts. So let's first set up our graph. We have a title. We're going to the amusement park. Our x variable represents the number of ice creams. I know this because it said they cost $3 each, so $3 per ice cream. Our y-axis is going to represent our number of tickets that we purchase. We know that because they said they were $5 each, so $5 per number of tickets. And then together, our combination equals $120. So now I'm going to pause here. I'm going to ask you to identify the x and y intercepts graph your line, and then interpret what the x and y intercept mean to this problem. Go ahead and pause now. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Let's find the x-intercept together now. So the x-intercept is going to lie on the x-axis, which means it must have 
a y coordinate of zero. So if this was zero, we're going to be left with 3x equals 120. Divide both sides by 3, so our x-intercept is 40. So I can go and set up my intervals down here. I'm going to start at 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You could have done different intervals, but I did intervals of 5. And there's my x-intercept, 40, 0. Now let's go find the y-intercept. My y-intercept I know is going to lie on the y-axis, which means it is going to have an x-coordinate of 0. So cover this up. That would be 0. 5y equals 120. Divide both sides by 5. So I know that 24 is my y-intercept. So let's make intervals over here on going up our y-axis by 4. And then plot our point our y-intercept 0, 24, and connect with a line. So this is what I would call a discrete function, but for the purpose of this we're going to connect it with a line instead of finding all the points that would connect it in between. So this line represents, but just know that you cannot buy a half of an ice cream. So even though it's a discrete function, we only know these two points right now, so this is showing the path that the um, combinations would go. And we're asked to right now interpret the x and y intercepts. So the x intercept means that if I buy 40 ice creams, I can buy zero ride tickets. And the y intercept tells me that if I buy 24 ride tickets, I can buy zero ice cream. So Again, our x-intercept represents if we spent all our money on ice cream, and our y-intercept represents if we spent all our money on ride tickets. And then any points in between this would represent combinations of ice cream and ride tickets that you would buy. And there you have it. That is how you graph a linear function in standard form. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the review of vertical and horizontal lines and how to use x and y intercepts to graph a linear function in standard form. And that's the magic of math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe and come back soon. Have a great day.